First reading, a reading from the book of prophet Isaiah, chapter 49, verses 1 to 6. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him? For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, it's my joy to welcome you once again for our reflections and prayer today. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. After Jesus had said this, he was deeply troubled and declared openly, I am telling you the truth. One of you is going to betray me. The disciples looked at one another, completely puzzled about whom he meant. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was sitting next to Jesus. Simon Peter mentioned to him and said, Ask him whom he is talking about. So that disciples moved closer to Jesus' side and asked, who is it, Lord? Jesus answered, I will dip some bread in the sauce and give it to him. He is the man. So he took a piece of bread, dipped it and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Scariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Hurry! and do what you must. None of the others at the table understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas was in charge of the money bag, some of the disciples thought that Jesus had told him to go and buy what they needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. Judas accepted the bread and went out at once. It was night. After Judas had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man's glory is revealed. Now God's glory is revealed through him. And if God's glory is revealed through him, then God will reveal the glory of the Son of Man in himself and he will do so at once. My children, I shall not be with you very much longer. You will look for me. But I tell you, 
Now what I told you, the Jews' authorities, you cannot go where I am going. Where are you going, Lord? Simon Peter asked him. You cannot follow me now where I am going, answered Jesus. But later you will follow me. Lord, why can't I follow you now? Asked Peter. I am ready to die for you. Jesus answered, Are you really ready to die for me? I am telling you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you do not know me. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, I am quite impressed by some of the stunt actors who seize the occasion, plunge into the action and beat the fear. Fear, as we all know and have experienced at times, have myriads of meanings and definitions. Fear, for our reflections, I wish to present two definitions or connotations of fear. F-E-A-R, fear. The first meaning of fear could be forget everything and run. The second meaning of fear is face everything and rise. I wish to bring to our notice the first character that we discuss. It is Peter who denied Jesus. In Peter, we see the second aspect of fear, that is, face everything and rise. He faced his fears, his giants of fears, faced the uncertainties, the denial, frustrations, but he did not give up because he was so much full of the risen Lord. Without any fear, he shared the risen Lord. So he was able to face all these challenges and rise about petty divisions, petty frustrations. The first meaning of fear is forget everything and run. And we see that in Judas Cariot, who forgot his master, who could not even face the Lord. And he hung his, his life. He ran away from the Lord. And then, what is important for us to understand, when we all go through these frustrations, disappointments, when we face fears, giants of fears, we need to inculcate this aspect of having faith bigger than our own fears. Having faith bigger than our own fears. We can question and ask, is my faith bigger than my fears? It is where our gospel invites us to today reflect and to imbibe this faith, the faith even that could move the mountains. St. Ignatius of Loyola in his spiritual exercises presents to us three important aspects of knowing, of loving and of following. Psalm chapter 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know the Lord. So knowing is the first step of loving a person. The second step is of course loving. The third step leads to follow. When we know someone, when we fall in love with someone and then we are able to follow that. I am reminded of this beautiful saying. When we run alone, it is called race. And when we include God in our running, in our race, when we join Him, when we put that G in front of our race, it becomes grace. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us make our race an amazing grace. It is beautifully sung. Great things happen when God mixes with us. Great things happen 
when God mixes with us. So let us pray for this grace during this day and may the good Lord be with us and guide us in all our endeavors. Sri